Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to an Amorex tutorial. This is designed for streamers who are trying to understand just how Amorex works because it is quite a confusing program, but it is a very useful program and one that I use every time I stream from a console. So uh, once you understand it, it is very dynamic and will handle essentially everything that you want as far as capturing console footage is concerned. And so what I've got here in the top left corner of the screen, this is the standard Amarok window that you're greeted with when you open Amarok. And then this here is actually the config menu, which I'll show you how to get to in just a second. Uh, but we'll be primarily looking at the config menu so that you can see just what you can do with Amarok. Um, so the first thing to point out is that I have Amarok 2.20C. There are many different versions of Amarok. Um, but from my understanding and my experience just working with it, uh, it's easiest to work with the version that is 2.20C. So if you can find a specific version of Amarok, uh, that's the one that you're looking for. I'm assuming that other versions will work similarly to this version, but just uh, keep in mind that if you're using a different version than 2.20C, that some of the things I'm going to tell you might not be true. So the first thing to note is that uh, this is actually the stream, the screen region window. So if I were to boot up a game, here I've got uh, Sky Blazer sitting, ready to go. If I boot up a game, it'll actually just start displaying the game in this window. So you can actually just directly capture that screen region, um, and that's what I do with my console games. I just capture the screen region uh, of Amarex window. Now, if I right click anywhere on this screen. Uh, actually, let me, I'm going to close this for just a second and just config. So hold on there. You get to look at some Super Metroid background. If I right click here, I'm presented with a series of options. Uh, it's kind of like a smaller config window. It's not as complicated, but it has a lot of the basic things that you're looking for. Um, so you'll notice right away that we have an aspect and scan option. And this allows you to set if you want it to be 4x3, 16x9, 16x10, what have you. Uh, for the most part, I'm capturing off of a Dazzle, just so that you guys know I'm using a standard Dazzle, and I'm using uh, S-Video as my input. Um, so I'm just going to leave it in 4x3. And then I have Underscan selected here. Uh, Overscan just switches, uh, I believe it kind of fattens things. It might not even make a difference, actually. Uh, but it usually crops off a section of the screen, so I leave it on understand. Uh, so that's fine. And then next up we have window size. You can make, you can zoom in if you want to, uh, or, or I guess I should say you can make the Amarok window itself larger or smaller. I just leave it at the default 100, and if you press enter, it's a hotkey to bring it back to 100%. Uh, next up I have always on top, and I always enable this because that means that if I put any other window below Amarok or in the same region of my computer monitor, Amarok will always have priority and be on top. So there's nothing you can do to put something over that window. Uh, and that's useful for when you're capturing. You don't want to have something pop up on your screen and get in the way of your game's uh, region. So that's important. Uh, I don't full screen it. I don't no frame. So those are, we can ignore those. Input and channel, here's where you specify um, which of the inputs on your Dazzle or capture device should Amarek try to find the feed from. So you've got choices like auxiliary, tuner, composite, and S-Video. So S-Video is the one that I plugged in. That's the one that I want to check. Generally, if Amarek goes searching, it will find whatever you plugged in and default to it. But just in case, you can specify it here. Volume, this actually varies game to game, and it's something that you need to keep in mind when you're streaming. Um, so the way that I do sound, I don't use virtual audio cable like a lot of people do. I actually just capture sound straight from Amarok, and I have Amarok play the sound when I'm streaming. So here, uh, 6 is the standard. I find that a lot of games are really loud on 6, so I step it down to 5. Um, but 5 or 6 is a generally a, a good volume, and you just have to listen to it to be able to hear. So, so just so that we're clear on my setup again. Uh, I use headphones while I stream, and so I'm hearing the game sound not through my TV, but through my headphones. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you didn't want to do that, if you wanted your TV sound, then 
you would mute uh, Amaric. So here you see I've got mute enabled at the moment, but if I unmute that, then it would play uh, Skyblazer sound. It's going to be sounding weird now because I have background music and <laughs> Skyblazer sound at the same time. Um, but you get the idea, so I can mute it. And then finally, we just have this graph button that's enabled. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So now if I go in here, I can choose config. And this will bring up the more detailed window where you're going to be doing a lot of stuff that you wouldn't uh, potentially know what to deal with. So look at this complicated menu that you're presented with. Um, it actually has a lot of the same stuff that that quick right-click menu had, but in more detail. So you'll see that we still have aspect ratio here. We can choose that from this menu. Uh, we can choose the scan mode, under scan or over scan, and it shows you little pictures here to show what that's gonna look like. So under scan might have horizontal bars at the top and bottom, but it captures the whole region. Over scan, it looks like it captures uh, no extra bars surrounding the game, but it chops off part of the game. The interlacing, always top field first. Always top field first. I've never had to switch that for any console, and it works just fine. Um, and it allows me to stream in 60 FPS if the game plays at 60 FPS. So you want top field first to get that 60 frames. And then function is kind of a weird, uh, poorly named attribute. In function here, we have for action game, for role playing game, for retro game, and uh, hardware de interlacing by VGA. Basically, it follows this rule. If you're playing on an old console, you want to choose for retro game. If you're playing on a new console, you want to choose for role-playing game. And here's the reason. If you try to play on a newer console and choose for retro game, you're going to get a bouncing screen. So if you ever watch someone's stream and you see kind of their screen shaking, that's exactly what the problem is, is that they're probably using this for retro game setting and they're playing a GameCube game, for instance. So just to reiterate, uh, you want to choose for role-playing game. If you're playing on something GameCube or newer, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Uh, N64 or older for retro game. And you can actually just test this too. You can try one of them, and if it looks like it's not right, so like if I switch this to for role-playing game, and then reboot up the stream here, uh, you might notice that something's not right. Now, this looks okay. But depending on what game it was, if I had Melee in here, for instance, and I made that kind of a switch, you would notice bouncing and know it's wrong. So as long as it's not giving you that bouncing effect, it really doesn't matter which of these two you choose. I just try to keep it consistent so that I don't have to worry about it not working in certain cases. Um, some other features on here on this tab. Notice I'm on the Graph 2 tab, by the way. I haven't mentioned that, but uh, you can crop it if you really want to. I don't see the need to crop because I can handle that in XSplit. Um, I don't rotate the display, so that's disabled. I don't double the scan lines, that's also disabled. Um, this is the majority of the functions that actually matter for getting your 60 FPS and making sure that the feed goes through nicely. But there are some other things on different tabs. So in Graph 1, we specify our video capture device and our audio capture. So Amaric can capture from a lot of different sources. If I really wanted it to, I could capture the video from my game and the sound from my microphone, but that doesn't make much sense. Just pointing out that Amaric has that versatility. So in this top menu here, I'm specifying which of the things plugged into my computer do I want the video to come from. In my case, it's the Dazzle. And then I specify that I want the S video feed from that Dazzle. And then the bottom, I want the audio to also come from my Dazzle, although notice I have choices like my microphone. Um, so I could choose, and Amaric would be able to adapt to those. Uh, you don't need to specify anything specific about audio, so this is kind of a weird menu. Uh, I think it shows stuff in certain cases, but ignore that for now. And then, as far as format is concerned, I've never had a problem with choosing this. 640, 480, 2997, YUY216. This one right here will handle your 60 frames per second if the game has it. It will handle your 30. It doesn't distort the picture like some of these other ones would. Uh, but there are other options here if you want to experiment with them and see what works. Uh, I find this to be the most normal setting. Uh, and then we've got the audio bit right down here, and I've got exactly one choice, so I didn't have to make any decisions there. 
if I go into device setting here, you get a little bit more specific as to specific uh, standards of video. So in some cases, uh, SNES games, for instance, have this problem a lot, sometimes N64 as well. Uh, the picture will look poor with the default setting, and you can switch between the Japanese setting and the normal setting. So you can just, I think that's what the J is for, I'm not sure. But you can swap back and forth and try them out. You'll notice that J is a little bit lighter, M is a little bit darker. Uh, so you just kind of try and experiment and see what works, but I've found that J is, is fine in most cases. Uh, you can mess with brightness, contrast, all that stuff here. I don't mess with any of that. I find it does a good job of defaulting. And then video image. Uh, these settings I just leave alone. I don't really know what they do. I don't see them helping me or giving me something that I really care about. So uh, that's on your own. Uh, we lost our music here. This is supposed to be an enjoyable uh, tutorial, so we're going to loop the music again. Uh, back to the front here. So we're on graph device 1. We looked at 1 and 2. If you go to the general one here, we can actually specify uh, a bunch of settings relating to the program itself. So for instance, the English language. Not that that helps you because it's not always the most descriptive thing in the world. But you can specify what your mouse does and other settings like that. Uh, for the most part, I don't touch anything here either. And then Graph 3 Live deals with if you actually want to have Amarek produce a video file for you. I've never done this. I know that if you're interested in uh, sending in a video to SDA where you or, or doing something where you want just the direct feed and not your stream feed, then this would be valuable to you. Um, here you would set what frame rate you want the video to be. Do you want to resize the video? If so, what, what uh, resolution do you want? what audio format do you want, and uh, whether or not you want to enable the ability to record that live video. Um, and then you can do some, you can even do some fancy mixing here with the audio if you want to. I don't specify a microphone or PC internal sound. I'm assuming what that means is, in addition to whatever it captures over here as your audio capture device, when you're doing a live recording, you would also be able to have the microphone get picked up as well as uh, internal sounds of the PC but again I don't record live off of Amarek I don't have a need to I just keep my stream recordings so for me this is another app that I don't really care about but it might be useful for you and then we get to other things here that for the most part I just leave alone I don't I don't mess with these this doesn't mean anything to me uh, this is more recording stuff so when you're doing your live recordings you can set video file stuff, for instance, what audio compressor do you want, what video compressor. I don't use any of that again. All the defaults would be fine for me if I were to ever use it. And then you've got just kind of tiny menus here, like a screenshot menu, uh, hotkeys if you really want to add hotkeys. I don't use them for anything. Uh, and then just advanced settings here. You can set the priority, which is sometimes a big deal if you find that Amarek is dropping frames or it's not running with as much priority as you would want you could change that here don't set it to real time setting things to real time is generally bad in windows uh, just set it to high and then there's other things like you can limit our recording size so that it doesn't destroy your computer um, but other than that there's not really anything too much uh, the main things you're going to want to look for when you're first setting up Amarek get this graph to screen to match or to at the very least fit what you want it to because this is a screen that influences the things that matter when it comes to streaming it gets you your 60 frames per second it gets rid of the bouncing effect if you do it correctly and it gets you the right aspect ratio and everything so this is the screen that i would focus the most on um, but this screen graph one is what actually sets up what gets displayed in Amarex window. So you need to specify here, I'm using a Dazzle. I want you to capture the video. I want you to capture the audio or whatever your capture card may be. You need to specify that stuff here. Uh, and then we can go in, I mean, there's, there's kind of minor things, but uh, in my case, I don't actually have audio device settings. So I would assume that depending on what your audio capture is, you would get bonus settings here if you click this. I don't get anything. 
Uh, same with input setting. So your results may vary here, but you might have some bonus features that I don't have. Uh, and then, like, just to kind of reiterate, let me bring this up for full screen. This is your standard Amarek window. Uh, we've got a recording button here in the top and a hotkey. So if I press Z uh, while Amarek is highlighted, it will record. And I've also got the ability to take just a screenshot and I can mute it. Uh, so these are kind of your quick hotkeys to record, screenshot, mute. Um, this is the screen region of the game. At the very bottom here, you can see what it's taking the feed of, what resolution it's trying to play back at, the frame rate that you're getting, and then you're also seeing dropped frames here. So it's dropped seven frames, um, which isn't too bad. And between these two numbers here, I, I don't really honestly know uh, uh, with 100% certainty what these are, but my guess is that this number on the right here is the feed, uh, the frame rate that's being fed into Amarek, and then the deinterlacing is causing it to double. So it's it's being fed 30 frames, but it's deinterlacing them to 60 is my guess, uh, based on what I've seen. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there is to Amarek as far as what you would use for streaming is concerned. I'm sure there's more out there that is unexplained or unknown yet, but for the most part, this will get you streaming with Amarek and getting you those quality settings that you want. Uh, just make sure when you go live, you know, you got your aspect the way you want it. Your window size is appropriate for what you're doing. You can make it smaller if you need more screen space on your monitor. Make it bigger if you desire a potentially more detailed screen region. Uh, get that always on top going again. Make sure you got the right feed. I think that's pretty much it. I'm kind of already duplicating what I was saying to begin with, but that's also potentially useful as you go through and follow along with the video. Uh, if there's anything else you need to know about Amarek, you can feel free to just ask me on my stream or post comments, I'm sure. Uh, we'll upload this to YouTube so you can mock me there or provide extra info if you know something I don't. Uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching this tutorial of Amarek, and I hope it improves your stream. Have a great day.